What's up guys? Welcome to Cat and Beats. Um, I just prepared a session for you, but then Ableton Live 10 crashed, so it's a little bit annoying, but whatever, we're just gonna make it from scratch. So Ozone uh, came out with an imager a while ago, and I'm making this video for people that want to have a multi-band imager and have the same, almost the same functionality as um, Ozone 8's imager, which is really, really nice. Uh, but then I'm going to make it in Ableton and make it for free. So the only thing you have to do is to follow along with the video. And uh, let me just delete things you don't need. And uh, make yourself an imager. So let's just do that together. You can download the imager for free from Ozone, um, from Isotope's website. So let's just get the imager now. So the imager is here. And I'm just going to drag and drop that onto the master channel. You can drop it anywhere else. And um, to make this a multi-band, the only thing we have to do is to group it. So we're going to press Command G or Control G and on the device itself. And then you have grouped it and you've made an audio effect rack. Now you can rename that uh, to Imager and you can rename it with Command R. And what I'm going to do is also add in an EQ3 and drop that in just before the ozone imager. All right, then I'm gonna take this chain and duplicate it two times. So press Command D twice or press Control D. All right, now I'm gonna rename every single one to not get confused. So you have high, you have mid, and you have low. All right, cool. So let's start with the low one first because that's where we ended. What you need to do is turn off the mid and high band so that only the low toggle here is switched on. Same thing here, turn off the low and the high band so only the mid is switched on. Same thing here, turn off the low and the mid so only the high is switched on. So it should look like this, high, mid, low. See that? Great. Um, now to make this, work so that you can work it with knobs instead of with going into every single little ozone imager plugin uh, click on the macro control knob here and what we're going to do is we're going to map some macro knobs so let's first do the high one and we're going to click on this little function here click on the ozone imager and just move this width knob for a second so we now know that the width knob is right here so what we can do is press configure right click and map to macro knob number one. Make sure to immediately already write what that is because otherwise you're gonna forget. So hi. So let's do the same thing for the mid, just rinse and repeat, open it up. I'm gonna close this off again, configure it. And map for knob number two, rename it to mid. All right, great. And let's do the same to macro knob number three. So that's going to be the low. So I click the low open, configure it, and macro knob number three. We're not done yet. So now each of these ozone uh, imagers will be corresponding with the low, mid, and high. So the more you shift the knob over to the right, the more of a wide image you're gonna get. So the stereo field is gonna increase. The more you put it to the left, the more mono it becomes. If you wanna know what the middle one is, it's on 64, then you're in the middle. So somewhere around there, you should be good. Now, um, ooh, so annoying. Now there's another knob that we have to make, because if we look at the uh, ozone imager out of experience I know you have to click the stereoize button and if we can control all of these so all the amounts so that it's become one then um, then you can make a really nice effect so check this out so we're just gonna take the configure knob again and for each single stereoize knob we're gonna turn them on and put them to one knob again. So let's put that to macro knob number four. So that's this one, macro knob number four, and then we're just gonna call stereo wise. <laughs> this is a silly name. Anyway, let's go to mid as well. Open, actually configure this to stereo wise. It all goes under one knob because they all have to function together and make sure you turn it on as well. 
the same thing for the highs. And I think it's good that you're doing this yourself if you're following along because now you're going to learn how to do this kind of stuff. You can start thinking outside the box. So um, check it out. Now we have a stereoized knob, which is moving every single stereoized thing that we have, right? So let's just open them all up so you can see it. And then I'll give you an audio example. So all the stereoizers are moving simultaneously. All the high mid things are moving to where we need it to be moving to. See, boop, boop, boop. So that's really nice. So let's just put it back to zero ish, which is 64 ish. Maybe it's 63. No, 64. Okay, there is no zero exactly, but whatever. So let's just close all those off. And what we can do now is kind of close this off. So the only thing you have is the knob. So now you have a perfectly functioning imager. The only thing you don't have is a um, view of if you're doing too much or not. So I suggest using this last imager here and not touching this part, but only using the vector scope here to see if you're going too much out of phase, yes or no. So if you want to stick around, I'm going to quickly uh, put some loops together and then we can use the imager to see uh, how it sounds. So I'm just going to turn off this for a second. There we go. So uh, let's just get some loops from um, sample phonics because it's nice and easy. So we'll just take this, some loops. Let's just take some drums and ooh, it's a little bit loud. Let's turn this off for a second. Let's just take these drum loops and we'll stereoize this. Normally you use an imager all the way at the end, but let's just see what this sounds like. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna go with headphones. Okay, so if we look at the vector scope thing here, we can basically see that we're very mono. And to make this even cooler, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to press Command K and I'm going to um, put the high, mids and low under a key. There you go. That's going to be dope. That's going to be nice. So now I can do this. So I can see that my highs are already quite wide. My mids are extremely narrow. And my low is already really narrow. So what we can do is actually widen the mids. Woo! Okay, so if you're wearing headphones, then you have this immediate effect of it becoming very wide. Or we can say, let's narrow it down. But then it's kind of the same, right? Or let's take the highs and turn them down a little bit. And increase the... Yeah, it works. All right, great. And then you can use the stereo knob to kind of fine tune it. But we're still completely in phase and we can check that via just listening to the mids. Good. So it's a really powerful little tool if you didn't, you know, start adding in um, some, some keys, which are generally speaking already really wide. I don't know what this is, but let's see. A pad. Oh my god. Here, this is probably going to be really wild. Just one key. But I hope you can... Where did, where did this even go? It's over here. Okay. <laughs> I was already thinking, why doesn't it work? But I hope you can... Um, use this imager and if you want to keep this imager so you don't have to make it every single time you can just save it and you can just call it the imager and it will be saved under your audio effect rack okay so that's that follow along with it it's easy to do and uh, it's extremely powerful but make sure that your overall so if you put this on your two bus or your master bus make sure that you basically keep in this area and you don't go around here or here because then you're going to be phasing okay phasing is not nice that's it for today quick tip make yourself a multi-band imager brilliant peace out guys
see you next time. If you have any um, suggestions of me making devices, then let me know. I can put some things together. It's quite easy to do.